Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to get started in just a second. Uh, we're going to wait maybe one or two minutes longer um, for everyone else who's just trying to log on and get into the webinar. So if you hold tight, uh, we'll be getting started shortly. Okay, we're going to go um, get started. Welcome everyone. As I said, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us to the first webinar for Give Local NRV 2020. My name is Lisa. I'm the Community Engagement Manager at Mighty Cause. We also have on this webinar Claire Gilbert, I'm the Marketing Coordinator at the Community Foundation. Um, so we'll be going through the uh, first webinar with you. Uh, and if you'll notice on the go to webinar control panel on your right hand side, you will have a questions area. So throughout the webinar, if any questions pop up, feel free to use that spot to uh, type in your questions and we'll be more than happy to answer it at the end. Uh, but if Claire, if you want to go ahead and um, if you have, have anything you want to um, add before we really get started. Um, hi, everybody. So this is actually um, Jessica Wergo with the Community Foundation. Um, and I'm going to kind of lead the charge from the Community Foundation's angle today. Can you hear me okay, Lisa? Yep, I can hear you perfectly. Oh, perfect, perfect. So hopefully everybody can hear you. So um, just thank you, everybody, for taking the time to be part of the webinar. And thanks, Lisa, um, for kind of leading the charge from Mighty Causes standpoint. So um, as, as folks know from reading our correspondence and hopefully being a part of some different events we've had over the last several months. Um, the Community Foundation is excited to host our Giving Day again this year. Um, this year the Giving Day is going to be in June with contributions um, counting during the month of June and we're excited um, to kind of have a new partnership with Mighty Cause and to transform what was Give Big NRV now to Give Local NRV. Um, we think that this is going to be um, a really great opportunity for nonprofits to utilize this platform, not just for the giving day, but for some year-round giving opportunities um, and really uh, provide some additional features that are going to be helpful to the different organizations that we work with. So over the next several months, you'll receive correspondence from us as you have um, to date with information about the giving day links to different webinars like this one and one coming up in April that's more around strategy for the Giving Day. And then we'll also be announcing in the next couple months our range of incentive grants that we offer for the Giving Day. These are the different grant awards that you can win for, say, having the most unduplicated donors in um, Floyd County or for having 100% of the members of your board make a contribution. We'll be doing similar grants to those um, that we had last year and, and hopefully have some others as well. Um, so with that, I'll turn it back over to Lisa and just happy in the, in the chat to answer any questions that folks have. Hopefully this will give you a good overview of the platform um, and then we'll talk uh, more in future webinars about different ways to make the most of the giving day. That's all I've got, Lisa. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, so um, we for this webinar, we'll be trying to go over some introductory technical aspects that you should keep in mind if you um, if this is your first time accessing the platform. And then at the end, we'll go over some fundamental strategy things. But the second webinar will go into more detail on some strategy strategy tips and tricks. So, so as we all know, the event will be on June 24th. However, early giving starts June 1st. So that's when you can begin soliciting um, for donations. Donors can donate and it will count towards prizes. So June 1st is the date that you wanna have in your mind. Um, and as mentioned, prizes will be announced um, in a soon date. 
So for those of you who may have never participated in a giving day before, just some quick information about giving days and why nonprofits want to participate in, in giving days. This is a great opportunity to spread, spread awareness of your mission, your work, and most importantly, your community. Um, not only is there a competitive aspect of giving days, but you work collectively together as organizations in the same area um, to you know, raise money for the work that you guys do um, in your region. And so this is also a great opportunity to win additional prizes and donations for your uh, organizations. So you guys can keep doing the work that you're doing. And it's also a great time of the year to engage with your supporters, to engage with those one-time donors or to engage with your board members that maybe don't, um, you know, you know, only have serve one function and you want to get them motivated and working on your organization in different ways. So this provides a really great opportunity to do all of those things. So to go over just the basics as to what you should prepare and what you should get started in doing for the giving day. One, you want to make sure that you're registered for your nonprofit. That's the first step. So you want to make sure that you head over to the giving site and you fill out the registration form. Once you've been approved, you'll get an approval email. If you haven't received one, then that your registration form e either hasn't been successfully filled out or uh, you haven't filled out the registration form. Secondly, you want to create and customize your profile page, which we'll get into more detail. The third is to start planning and strategizing a fundraising plan around the giving day. So how do you want your supporters to interact with you? How are you going to advertise to donors? What is the mission that you're sending out in your marketing? And again, how are you marketing your campaign? What are the different emails, social medias, uh, or so social media um, texts that you're going to send out? Uh, what are live events that you're going to host and how you're going to get people to actually participate in all of those things. So for those of you who haven't navigated to the Give Local NRV site, the website is Give Local NRV. And the registration page will be right on there. As you see right at the top of this image, you simply click the register form, fill it out. And um, once you submit it, you will be approved within 24 to 48 hours and you should look out for your email. Uh, you will also need to add yourself as an administrator to your organization profile page on the platform. So you may receive another approval email, but that will be separately related to just being added as an administrator. And one thing to note is that you can have several administrators for one organization. So you don't have to just have one or two, you can have as many as you want and you can add or remove them as needed. Once you're logged into your organization profile page, on your left hand side, you should see an administrative dashboard. And this is how you're going to manage your organization on the platform. This is how you're gonna make all of your edits. This is how you're gonna access donor information. And your dashboard is divided up into key areas that we'll also be going into a little bit more detail through the webinar. So first is the home page. The home page is going to be an overview section, a welcome screen. So you don't want to confuse that with your profile page as to what donors are going to see. The home area is just for administrators and it'll give you a quick glance as to your total donations that you've raised within the past 30 days. Your profile is what not donors will see when they head to your profile page. It will also um, allow you to edit your page and make any changes that you need on there. Reports will provide you key donor information and allow you to customize the donor experience. Um, and as well with the reports area, you have a couple of different donation reports available for you, such as a recurring donation report, a donor retention report, an online donation um, report, and just a general overall donations report. Fundraising allows you to keep track of all of your different campaigns that you've created, 
and as well allows you to create a new fundraising pages. You'll also have the ability to, um, as I said, uh, customize your donor experience in your checkout flow as well as your thank you receipt and your thank you page. And then lastly, within settings, you'll be able to add or remove admins and set up any crucial information or any edits to your organization page. For example, perhaps the end of your URL you want to change, you can do so within your organization settings. Great. So, as I mentioned, right after you've registered your nonprofit, you've been approved, you want to start customizing your profile page because this is going to be the main page that donors and your supporters are going to see. This is what they're going to be sharing with your, uh, this is what they're going to be sharing with friends and family on social media, etc. Within the profile page, there is an area to share images as well as to share an about section about your nonprofit. And you want to make sure within your about section that you're thinking of a powerful story um, that will really motivate and incentivize donors to either make a donation or make a larger donation than they had originally were expecting to make. And so as well, when you're thinking of what information you can provide, um, I would think outside of the box of just what you have on your website and your about section. You know, how can you explain to donors the mission of your campaign and what money you're specifically raising for? What are your goals that you're, you have set for your organization and how their donation um, can help really, um, you know, meet your goal and make that happen? On your profile page, you'll have the ability to customize the theme color as well as add images outside of just a gallery. So you'll want to upload your logo. And one thing to note, it is a one-to-one -one aspect ratio. So probably the logo that you have on your Facebook page will suffice for that area. And then a banner image behind that logo. And this will simply allow your page to pop a little bit more when donors come on there. For your background photo, you can also choose a filter color and decide how uh, transparent you want that background image to be. And that theme color will allow you to customize that primary color donors will see when they scroll through your page. As I mentioned before, the a story section or the about section is one of the most important areas of your platform of the uh, profile page. You can edit this area with the inline text editor. You will have all of the formatting needs that you um, need to in order to add information into this area. You can add images and you can also add videos. One thing to know about adding videos is that your video will need to be already uploaded on a third party platform like YouTube. And then you can add that URL onto your page and it will um, populate there. As well, you'll also have a custom tab available to you if you do wanna share any additional information that's a little bit separate and segmented than just your about section. And again, all of this can be found in the profile section of your left-hand side dashboard. And for editing, you select page editor. So as you scroll down your profile page, towards the bottom, you'll see this media gallery that you'll have available to add any key images that you want for your organization. And you'll also be able to integrate your social media, like your Facebook gallery or your Instagram gallery, so that any images that you're uploading there are automatically uploaded on your profile page. So it's a great opportunity to keep your page fresh and new without having to constantly go in and um, make those changes. As well, on your profile page, you will see social sharing icons. Those are available for donors and supporters so that if they want to quickly share a link to your page on Facebook, on Twitter, they can simply select those icons and that will prompt them to log in and then share your page onto those social media platforms. Within profile, uh, there are three subsections. So again, as we've noted, there's live page, page editor, and then there's a third sub menu called page settings. 
Now your page settings has really two key things that you want to review. So one are your metrics. So if you want to have a goal or progress bar, if you want to show your total raised or a donor count, you want to head over to this area to one, make sure that all of those things are enabled, but secondly, to also choose the calculation date. So what date do you want donations to start counting from? So in the case for your uh, giving event, you wanna make sure that you probably are setting your metrics to start June 1st of when you can begin accepting donations. As well within this page settings area, you'll have the opportunity to embed a donation widget onto your website. As you see in the screenshot here, of what that preview will look like. You'll simply, simply copy and paste this iframe code onto your website, and it provides a direct way for donors to make a donation through your website and for it to still count towards leaderboards, prizes, and your overall campaign. So it's a great opportunity to continue that across you know, your website and have that consistent regardless of where a donor um, you know, ends up um, on your website or on your campaign. So if we head back to our dashboard, and now that we're done with the profile section, let's head to the next one below profile called reports. So as I mentioned, reports are going to hold all of your donor information as well as it will hold uh, disbursement information. So if you are an administrator to your organization on the platform, you will automatically receive an email notification when a donation is made. So you can keep track of how many donations you're receiving throughout the campaign. But as well, you can always log into your account and review this information within reports. All of our donor data is in real time, and you can also export it if you need to send it to any of your teammates or to your accounting team, et cetera. As I mentioned, there are a couple of different reports available, so I would definitely recommend checking them out when you have it um, a second so that you are familiar with how all of them look and the information that are provided in each one. Disbursement information um, will be provided to you within the disbursement section within reports. We disperse funds twice a month um, via uh, EFT and once a month via check. Access to disbursement details are available in an email that we send out once we do send out disbursement information. And also it can be available anytime within this section. So you can always go back and review this disbursement breakdown so you can keep track of all of that information. The last section within your reports area of your dashboard is analytics. And analytics will give you a great quick view in regards to the current fundraising that you're doing on the platform. So it'll give you an idea of the average donation, your retention, your current highest donation, your overall, how many unique donors you've received so far. And it'll also be able to share you some quick peer-to-peer -peer metrics um, and so that you and your team can quickly come together and analyze how you're doing maybe at the start of your campaign versus the entirety of your giving event. So now that we've talked through the report section of your dashboard, we're going to move down to fundraising. And donor experience is where you can begin to enter any uh, customizations to your checkout flow that you need. You'll also be able to opt into additional data information here, and we'll get into that in a second. Oops. Okay, great. So, the donor experience area is divided up into really two key sections. One is called checkout steps and the second is called post checkout. So checkout steps will have anything to do in regards to the checkout flow. 
So it's going to break down your, um, provide you the ability to customize donation levels, which there are four of, as well as a custom button. And it'll also allow you to add in descriptions to your donation levels. And that's one thing that you may want to consider doing is adding descriptions to your donation levels. That's a great opportunity to share with donors, you know, the impact of their donation and again, motivate them to maybe make a larger donation than they, uh, they had thought of when they first opened up the checkout flow. And then additionally, within that area, you'll be able to opt into donor, certain donor data. We will automatically collect the email address, the name of the individual, um, you know, their amount, the date, and we will provide you all of that info. But if you would like to collect address information or phone numbers, you will have to head over to donor experience and enable that so that's collected for you. And as well, if you do choose to collect address information, all of that information is available on your donor report exported CSV file. So within the second area of this donor experience section is the post checkout phase. And this is where you can edit the thank you page and the uh, thank you message on the receipt. So once a donor completes their transaction, they're automatically prompted into a thank you page. That says thank you for donating you know, to your organization. However, if you want to add a custom message to that page that pops up, maybe you want to add a CTA and a link to your website, or you want to add photos or videos, or you just want to add your own special, special message thanking donors, you can do so within this section. And then once donors receive that thank you page, they're automatically sent a donation receipt to the email address they entered during the checkout flow. And this donation receipt will provide them all the text deductibility information, et cetera. But if you wanna add, again, your own customized thank you message, thanking the donors for making a donation, adding a link to your website, um, you can do so within this section. And all of this information is also previewable within donor experience. So if you want to exactly see what donors will be seeing, um, how it will look like for them, there are preview buttons for you to do so. As well within the fundraising area, you'll have an opportunity to add matching grants. So this tool allows a matching grant to be displayed on your organization profile page and allow you to keep track of what donations are being counted towards that match that you've added in. Our matching grant tool is really flexible, so you can add different uh, matching grants in there. So if you have a dollar for dollar, or maybe you have something that maybe is a bit more unique, um, you wanna have your, your matching donations up to 200%, et cetera, our match will provide you the opportunity to customize how you want that reported and calculated. The match, if you were able to acquire a match, doesn't have to be paid through the platform. Again, this is really a display and reporting tool. Um, if your grantor wants to make their donation offline, that's totally up to the agreement that you've created with your grantor. But if they do want to um, make a donation online, they're more than happy to do so. And one thing to note is that your match will not count towards leaderboards. Um, unless the donation is made, unless the grantor makes their donation online. Um, so let's say though your match does not, your grantor chooses not to make their donation online, um, they are making it via check, um, you can still have your totals on your profile page show that match being calculated so that they can see you know, the significance of the match and how much you've been able to raise with that match. And as well, if you do have offline donations that you're adding to the platform, uh, you can have your offline donations or your offline gifts count towards that match. So, we're heading to the last section of your left-hand side dashboard, which is settings. And settings is divided up into three different areas. So first is admins, and admins will allow you to add or remove any administrators that you want. 
you simply select add an admin to add one or you'll see a gray next to the corresponding admin that you want to remove and you simply select that. If you're looking to update the legal mailing address or set up direct deposit, you can do so within organization settings. Uh, if you are looking to update both of those two things, we will be requiring um, some documentation for those. For a legal mailing address, uh, if you're looking to update that, we will need um, documentation via a bank utility bill, uh, any government document that simply clarifies that your organization is at this new mailing address that you're requesting. And with EFT, we will require you to enter a voided check or bank letter that confirms that the uh, banking information you're providing belongs to your organization. And as I mentioned previously, uh, you'll be able to customize the end of your URL here. And uh, if you want to customize your social sharing image and text, so when a donor does share your link to their social media, what populates, you'll be able to edit that information within settings. And then lastly, uh, integrations will allow you to uh, create any integrations via a Zapier. It's a third party platform that provides integrations with different um, applications. So all of this information, including this webinar, is going to be available in your toolkit. Uh, as well, you'll be able to register for the second webinar in, in your toolkit. Uh, but this toolkit will have great tips and how-tos, and it will also have templates that you can follow and send out to donors or anyone that's looking to participate and help out for your giving event. Um, so please take the time to kind of check out this area and see what will be most useful for your organization, your team, as you prepare for their um, Give Local. So we're going to go into some quick strategy tips just to um, start thinking about as you start getting ready for Give Local. Um, and again, as I said, at the second webinar, we'll kind of jump more into any more detail with um, in regards to these strategy tips. So. So the one thing that you want to start doing is creating a strategic plan for your event. So you want to set a focus and a goal. Um, as I mentioned in the very beginning of this webinar, this is a great opportunity to share with your supporters and your donors what impact you're looking to make from these donations that you're getting on Give Local. You know, how are you um, you know, making use of these funds, what, what is the goal of your nonprofit? So if you can set that in the beginning, you'll be able to communicate that more effectively in all of your marketing um, and, and communication with donors. The third thing that you want to start thinking about is securing a matching grant. Um, now, a matching grant can come from anyone and it can be as big as or large as or big or small as you please. So a matching grant can be come from a local business or it can come from a board member that's willing to match $100 um, during your campaign. So start thinking about one, who you can reach out to and as well, um, you know, what type of matches you can creatively create on the platform based off who's interested in providing a match to your organization. The fourth thing to consider is planning out your communication. So working with your marketing team or working with volunteers and figuring out the steps and the segments that you're gonna create in contacting your donors. You know, how you're gonna contact your recurring donors may be differently than how you're gonna contact um, one-time donors that have given you a donation. So you want to start thinking about how you're going to communicate to each group and also how they can be how they can participate in the giving event. And then lastly, you also want to start considering how you're going to follow up with donors after the event. This is something that a lot of organizations can easily miss because you're very focused on the giving event and just creating a campaign for that. But once you receive donors or new donors, how are you going to stay in contact with them? How are you going to get them um, participating or supporting your organization after the event and become, um, you know, more than just a one-time donor for your organization? 
whoops. So now that we've gone through the quick strategy tips and some quick technical also tips in regards to the platform, um, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact our support team. We're always here to help. Um, we are open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We do have a support number as well, as well as a support email address. As I said, this is this webinar is going up on the toolkit, so you can always come back and access this if you need to remember the phone number or the email address of how to access this, but we're always here to answer any questions you guys have. All right, so I'm gonna jump into questions. Uh, so if anyone has any questions, feel free to type into the GoToWebinar control panel. Again, this will be available within the toolkit, so you can always come back and reference this, as well as we do have a whole support forum that jumps into more detail some of the topics that we've discussed in this webinar. So, All right, so a question that comes came up is trying to link Facebook page, but the system picks up on my personal page rather than my organization page. Um, one thing to consider is um, the browser that you're using. Sometimes if you're using uh, Chrome and that you've already logged into your personal Facebook account already, um, I would recommend going incognito or logging out of your personal Facebook page on the browser that you're using. Um, sometimes browsers will remember the login that you've already um, done for, for example, a Facebook or Twitter, et cetera. So either utilize incognito or open up your Facebook page, log out, and then log in with your um, correct page. Um, All right, so this is a great question. You mentioned the benefit of Give Local is working uh, um, is working collectively to promote giving. Do you think it's better to focus all giving on one day or to or to promote giving throughout the month of June? Which does research show is most effective? So, really, the idea behind early giving is to provide people the opportunity to give throughout the month of June um, because. You know, as we all know in the nonprofit world or in general, sometimes it takes people a couple of reminders um, to make a donation before they do so. So um, I would definitely recommend to begin promoting throughout the month of June. You have that time to collect donations. So I would definitely recommend utilizing it. Um, and that can be something part of your prep of like the, how the communication of how you want to um, segment this. Hey, Lisa, can I jump in there as well? Yeah, go ahead. So this is Jess at the Community Foundation. So I would just echo what you said, Lisa. Um, we, we made the whole month of June count towards the giving day because we recognize that, you know, in June people might be on vacation. Um, and so we wanted to provide that flexibility. A couple things to think about that we have seen work well for nonprofits. First, if you're sending out email communications throughout the month of June, it makes sense just to put, you know, language like, hey, you don't have to wait, you can help us right now. You know, giving folks a link and a chance to act every time you're sending a communication in June just ups the opportunities for them to give rather than sending them a communication that, you know, hey, don't forget June 24th is coming up. So I would say throughout the month of June, um, thinking through language that allows folks to kind of act right away. And then the other thing is that we'll sometimes have organizations that want to hold some sort of event related to Give Local. It might be an existing event that you have, an open house, um, uh, a workshop, something that you do, or it, it, it might be something that you want to hold during the month of June. But it's always good if you have an event um, to have a computer there where people can either contribute right away using your credit card or the system does allow you to enter in what are called offline donations, so checks and cash. Um, so those are always great, great ways to promote the Giving Day. And we used to find that that Folks did well with events on the giving day itself, but sometimes depending on who your target audience is, 
something on a Wednesday may not work, but now that you have the full month of June, you may have an event on a Saturday and that the contributions that are received in June at that event will still count. So while the, you know, you won't see where you are in relation to other organizations on the leaderboards until June 24th, I would definitely encourage everyone to use that full month of June um, and be strategic about how you're using that extra time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, I definitely second all of that. And in just addition to that, um, for example, if you do add a goal in progress bar to your profile page, so you set a goal um, as you begin getting donations throughout the month of June, your donors can see how close you are to that goal. So the closer you're getting to June 24th, the closer that they're seeing of how, how far you're you're close to that or how near you're close or how yeah close you are to that goal that you're um, trying to meet by June 24th. Um, okay, so um, is there a provision for cut lines with photos we may add on our fundraising or profile pages? Um, so on your profile page, you do have the opportunity to upload photos in there. You can add um, different, um, you can add captions in there, et cetera. So it's really a space for you to add, you know, any information that you want that you think is critical or important. So um, definitely utilize that space as much as you want. Okay, so I don't see any other questions coming in. Again, if there are any questions that come up maybe after this webinar that you realize, oh, I, I should have asked this question, feel free to contact our support. Uh, we're more than happy to help. Um, and as well, this webinar will be available right after we're finished. So thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate it. I hope this was helpful to everyone who's joined. and. Um, yeah, have a great day. Thanks so much, Lisa. Yeah, bye. Bye-bye.